Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Hello and welcome to another episode of Google Made Easy. My name is Peter Moriarty and I'm super excited to share what we've got for you in this episode. In this week's episode, we're going to be covering how to use the Google Apps Administration Panel. So if you're already on Google Apps for Work for your business, this is going to show you how you can get all of the administration tasks done that you need to do. So before we get started, two quick things. Number one, if you're following along at home and you've got your laptop out, make sure you're ready to do some serious implementing because we get super super practical in all of our sessions. Number two, make sure you're continuing the conversation with myself and the rest of the Business Blueprint community on social media. So we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram. Hit us up with the hashtag Google Made Easy and hashtag Business Blueprint. You can connect with me on Twitter and my other social profiles by visiting businessblueprint.com forward slash experts. So here's what we're going to be covering in this week's episode of Google Made Easy. First up, how to navigate the Google Apps administration panel, how to find it, how to find your way around, and how to get done what you need to to administer the Google Apps application in your business. Next up, the basics of user management, so how you can use Google Apps to add, remove users, and manage the staff in your business. Next, how to suspend and unsuspend users. So if you need to uh, do any of that, you'll be able to learn exactly how to do it. Next, how to allow other staff to manage your Google account. So if you'd like one of your team members to be able to add and remove and suspend staff, or maybe give them full access to tweak settings in the back end of Google Apps, you can delegate access to one of your other team members as well. Next, we'll be covering how to set up and configure Google Groups. Now, Groups is how we organize our staff into organizational units, and we're going to show you how you can use Groups for sharing and how you can get them set up and get your team into Groups. Next, how to deploy Chrome apps and extensions to your team. So hopefully everybody's using Google Chrome in your company. We're going to show you how to use some of the apps that you may have learned of uh, from our other shows and push them down to each person's computer using Google Chrome policies. Next, how to enable and enforce two-step verification, which is a fantastic security feature which will help you to keep your account more secure even if someone gains access to your login, username, and password. Next, we'll be creating a bookmarks policy. So if you've got any bookmarks that you'd like to have pushed down to your team, we can do that automatically in the administration panel and push that down to everyone via Chrome. And finally, we're going to be covering how to navigate the Google Apps Marketplace and add apps to your Google Apps installation to help you get even more out of the program. So let's get started. First up, we're going to be covering how to navigate the Google Apps administration panel. And if you've been set up on Google Apps before and you might be using Gmail, Docs, Drive, and the rest of the Google Apps for Business uh, application suite, you may not even know how to access the administration panel. Maybe you haven't seen it yet. There's two ways for you to access it, and I'm going to show you how to do that with both of them right away. So first up, we're going to be accessing the administration panel straight from Google's admin website. I'm going to show you how to get there. It's super easy. All we need to do is browse right in our browser to admin.google.com. And when we browse there, it's going to ask us to log in with our Google Apps administration address. And you'll notice here that I'm already logged in with my business email address um, with my Google Apps account. So it's going to let me log straight into the admin console. Now, if you try and access the admin console and for some reason it tells you that it's not available or you see a different screen to what I'm seeing right now, it may mean that you're not quite on Google Apps for work and you might need someone to double check that you're actually on Google Apps for the business edition for your company or perhaps you don't have access to a uh, actually view the administrator panel. You might not have been given the security credentials to access the panel. So make sure it's the person who first set up your Google Apps account who's accessing the admin panel and make sure they've been given access as a super administrator. But we're going to go through more of that very shortly. Now, I promised two ways to access the admin panel. There's one more way, and that's from Gmail. Let me show you how to get that done. I'm going to go ahead and jump into my Gmail here. and. Uh, Let's have a look at where I can access the admin panel from. Now, you probably already know how to get into Google Apps 
settings through Gmail, and we use this settings wheel right here on the right-hand side. So we're going to click the settings wheel, and then you'll notice there's an option to manage this domain. So if you've been set up as a Google Apps administrator, you'll be able to click manage this domain, and that will also open up the administration console. So that's how we access the admin console. Let's get to work on getting some of our basic tasks done. So you can immediately see here we've got some uh, different apps that we can manage. We've got users, company profiles, support, groups, uh, and a few others that are here. You can see here on the right-hand side, there's automatically a activity uh, marker with all of the recent activity in your business account. Uh, and there's a few other tools here as well, as well as some recommended apps from the marketplace. Now, one of the first things that you want to do once you get access to the admin console is click down to more controls down the bottom here and move up any of the apps that might not be visible in your apps administration panel right now. Now, Google doesn't bring them all up straight away uh, by default, so you've got to move some of those uh, up from the more controls, and then we can hide that. So we've now got access to all of our Google apps. So that's the basics there. Um, if you need to access any of the Google applications, all you need to do is click on one of these, and you'll get access to it. Let's have a look at what that looks like now. So uh, if we go into our users menu, um, you'll see it's going to bring up a list of users. And if we need to get back to the home screen, uh, we just click on to the menu here, and we can go straight back to the home screen there. That's about all there is to navigating the Apps Administration panel. Remember, the address to access it is admin.google.com. OK, so now we've got ourselves into the Administration panel. What are we going to do from here? Let's go through one of the most basic and the first administration task that you're probably going to need to do in the Admin panel, which is adding and removing team members. Now, this is an important role because as you're consuming Google Apps licenses, each user that you add is going to take up one extra license. So we want to make sure when someone moves on from the business, we uh, lock out any of their access. And we also want to make sure that we're not consuming more licenses that we need to. So let's take a look at how you can add and remove users in the Google Apps administration panel. So as you saw, we're going to go straight into our users menu from the admin panel, and we're going to go through managing the users there. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the users menu. And this is going to give me a list of all of the current users that we have in the business. If I'd like to add somebody new, uh, it's as simple as uh, hovering down on the Add New User menu. Now, there's some advanced options here, like adding multiple users uh, via a spreadsheet. So um, if you put all of your staff into a, a, a CSV spreadsheet, you can actually upload um, mass contacts. But if you're just adding people one by one, you can just click the Add User button, and that's going to give us the option to add somebody new. So let's go ahead and type in a first name and a last name. We'll set up uh, Tom Genius as our fictional character here. And uh, let's give him the username tom at itgenius.com.au. Now, if you've got multiple domain names that are attached to your Google Apps account, here is where you can choose how to add somebody with a secondary domain. So I'm going to set up Tom as tom at itgenius.com. Uh, and Google's going to automatically give a random password to Tom. Uh, but if I'd like to set a password for Tom, then I can go ahead and set a password for him. So I'm going to go ahead and do that um, so I can pass on the new password to Tom. So let's go ahead and click Create. And Tom is going to be created as a new user. So that's the basics of setting up this user for Tom, which is really simple and straightforward. Now, next up, let's have a talk about adding an alias or a nickname to Tom's account. Now, there's something important that we do with each account when we add an alias. And that is that we make sure we choose the correct domain to add the alias to. It's very important that each alias or nickname that you add to each account is corresponding to the email addresses that you want to have active for that individual user. So let's say, for example, that uh, user's last name is Potter. Let's say Tom might accidentally get an email sent to tom.potter or even tom.genius at itgenius. Let's set up some aliases so we've got access to those. So let's go ahead and we'll click on Tom's name. And let's create an alias for Tom. Now, Google calls aliases nicknames. So I'm going to go uh, from Tom's account into the account menu. And then I'm going to go ahead and scroll down and look for aliases. Here we go. So I can add tom.potter and click Save Changes. And if I'd like to add another nickname or alias, I can add tom.genius. And all of these will redirect into Tom's mailbox. Now, remember that these email addresses don't actually consume a user license. 
a alias or a nickname is free. I can have as many of those as I like. So try and think about the mailboxes like a bucket of email. You only get charged for each user or each bucket of email that you have under your Google Apps account. And Tom, because he's got multiple nicknames or aliases, still only consumes one user license because we've only got one license account for Tom. So let's go ahead and add an alias for a different domain now. So I'm going to click the Add Alias button, and let's say we want emails for Tom at itgenius.com.au to also filter into the same mailbox. I can choose one of my additional domains and go ahead and save changes, and that's going to also receive emails for Tom at itgenius.com.au .com.au to the same account. So that's creating a user and adding some aliases in there as well, so we can access multiple email accounts for Tom. If I wanted to, I can add a photo for Tom, but Tom's probably going to do that himself when he logs into the account. If I need to do something like resetting Tom's password, I can go up to our menu here and even reset Tom's password. Oops, that's the wrong one. Our reset password menu is here. That's the one with the padlock. Look out for that. So there we go. We've gone through the basics of setting up a new user account. To continue enjoying this presentation, download Brin, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Brin.ai or search the App Store today.